So this lesson is over proving triangles are congruent. Um, we're going to go into a lot more depth on these, um, but I just wanted to really quickly go over what this meant. So every time you see the letter S, that stands for a side that is congruent in two triangles. If you see the, word, the letter A, that means an angle that's congruent in both the triangles. So we have side, side, side. All sides are congruent. We have side, angle, side, where the angle is in between the sides. Angle, side, angle, where the side is between two angles. And then angle, angle, side, where the side is not in between the two angles. Um, now, the last thing, don't be an angle, side, side. Um, hopefully, you probably can get that joke. Uh, but either way, you cannot have, there is no angle, side, side proof. Um, that doesn't exist. Um, these are the only four that we're going to be using. Now, again, we're going to go into a lot more depth on this now. So uh, the first one we have is side, side, side. Um, if the three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Um, so these two triangles are congruent because all the sides are congruent. So AB is congruent to DE, BC is congruent to EF, AC is congruent to DF. So those two triangles are congruent. So here's one really quick example. Are these two triangles congruent, the top one and the bottom one? And they are, so we know we're given that these two are congruent. We're given that NY and PY are congruent. Um, but we don't know all three sides yet. We only know two of them. But I know this QY is congruent to QY. And it might be a little bit easier if I do it this way. Let's think of it like this. We have this triangle. And we have this triangle. So QY is in both of them. Well, QY whoops, is congruent to QY, and that is the reflexive property. I think I talked about it a little bit in the last lesson, but you're going to definitely make sure you want to know that because that happens all the time. We have the same, whether it's an angle or a side, if you have the same one in both of them, so this side is shared in the blue triangle and in the bottom red triangle. It's congruent because it's the same thing. It's congruent to itself. That's always reflected. Um, so that means that triangle QYN is congruent to triangle QYP. Make sure you write the congruent statement correctly. Um, so say if the two triangles are congruent, if they are, state how. Um, so we have this side, congruent to this side, this one, this one, and three, three. So all the sides are congruent. Um, so they're congruent by side, side, side. Um, this one, we know this side and this side are congruent. We know these sides are congruent, but we don't know anything about the third side, so we can't tell. So um, not enough information. That's how you can say that. That stands for not enough information. I honestly haven't used this very often, so if I forget, I apologize, but I saw that written down somewhere in somebody else's notes, and I kind of like that. Not enough information, any I. Um, these two are congruent with side, side, side. All three sides are congruent to all three sides of the other one. And what about this one? Again, we only know two sides, but I know this line is in both triangles, in the top and the bottom, so that means it's congruent to itself. So that's the reflexive property. Whoops. That is real messy. Drop my eraser. Um, so we know those are congruent by side, side, side. So the next one we're going to learn is side angle side. Now for this one, again, the angle has to be in between the two congruent sides. So if this was the angle we're looking at, it's not between those sides, so it's not correct. So the order definitely does matter. Um, so AB is congruent to EF, AC is congruent to DF, and the angle in between, those are all three congruent. So angle, I'm uh, sorry, side angle side. Um, so how do we do this one? Well, again, we know the angles, we know this, or sorry, we know the sides. Um, so those two are congruent, these two are congruent. Um, but we don't know anything about the angles, but we do know this angle has to be congruent to this one because those are vertical angles. So angle ACB has to be congruent to angle ECD. Sorry, I forgot the little angle symbol. And I know that because the vertical angle theorem, which means triangle 
ACB is congruent to triangle ECD because of side angle side. Make sure you're being careful with that because these really aren't too bad, but it's really, they're easy to confuse. This is side angle side. So the two triangles are congruent. Um, we have this side, whoops, this side and the angle in between. So that is congruent by side angle side. Um, so what about this one? Uh, so we know this side and this side, and we know that these angles are congruent. But again, now we have this side is the same in both triangles, and so it's got to be congruent to itself. That's that reflexive property again. I still can't spell it. Jeez. This is what happens when you try to go too quickly through this. Um, so we have side, angle, side. So those are congruent. Um, how about this one? So again, hopefully you guys see this overlap. So we know this is congruent. Um, so we have side, angle, side, side, angle. So yeah, we go side, angle, side. Again, that's reflexive. And let's see. So we have this side here to this side, this side congruent to this side. And again, we have a vertical angle in the middle. So we have side, angle, side. So that's also congruent. So next we have angle side angle. So it's similar except for now the side that's congruent is in between two angles that are congruent. So we have angle angle, angle angle, and then the side in between those. Um, so that means that those two triangles are congruent. Um, so now this one is a little bit interesting because this example we have parallel lines and so we have to do a little bit more for this one. Uh, first off I know this line is congruent to itself because that is the reflexive property. So this has parallel lines, but I'm going to put, I guess, above here. H I is congruent to H I because it's reflexive. I have dyslexia for sure. Sorry, that should be reflexive. Um, but then the other thing we know is I know so if this line is parallel to this line, then we can look at that blue line that I made as the transversal. So I know angle four and angle two have to be congruent because alternate interior. So angle four is congruent to angle two from alternate interior. And then now if we look at the other lines, they're also parallel. So they're marked parallel right here. So we have these two parallel lines. Um, so now we're looking at angle one and angle three are also alternate interior. So they're congruent. So angle one is congruent to angle three, also alternate interior angle. So this is the biggest one we've done that's taken the most work because I know this side is congruent to itself. Angle one is congruent to angle three. Angle four is congruent to angle two. So we have side, angle, side. So we had to go through and justify why everything we did worked out. But it is true then at the end we have triangle HGI is congruent to triangle, let's see, H, G, I would be I, F, H. So let's see a couple of these. I'll write a congruent statement for the two triangles that could be proven to be congruent by angle, side, angle. Um, so remember, the biggest thing is the side has to be between the two angles. That's why it's written in this order. Um, so this one is not. This side is not in between these two angles, so that can't be it. Um, so this one and this one have to be congruent. So I'm going to say triangle SUV is congruent to triangle NEO. Make sure you go in the right order. Um, remember S and N are congruent to each other. U and E are congruent, so that's how you had to do it in that order. Let's see, so this is the one that doesn't belong. Again, that side is not in between these two angles, so that doesn't work. So we have triangle, let's do G, O, H is congruent to triangle C, T, A. So the next one we have is angle, angle side. So this is the one where the side that isn't in between the angles. Um, so if you have two angles on one side and that side is not in between, they're still congruent. That is angle, angle side. 
Um, so we know this angle, this angle, we know this angle and this angle, but what about the side? Again, we know that side is congruent to itself because it reflects this. So AC is congruent to AC because they're reflective, which means triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC. So are the following pairs congruent? If so, state the theorem of postulate. Um, so um, now this isn't just, so the other one's just focused on one, and now we have all of them. So it could be angle, angle, side, or any of them that we know. Um, so if I know this one and this one are congruent, this angle and this angle are congruent, and then the side in between them, I know these are congruent by angle, side, angle. Take a minute to make sure you realize that side is in between, so you have to write it that way. Um, well, I know these are vertical angles and they're both perpendicular. If this is perpendicular, then these have to be perpendicular. So there's actually two theorems you could use there. Um, but it's angle, side, angle. Is this angle, side, angle? So both of those were angle, side, angle. Um, this one, we have this reflexive property here. Um, so we have angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. And the last one we have Oops, I should make it a double arc since we already have a single arc. Um, angle, angle, side. Now you could say, well, wait a minute, Mr. Stefan, why don't you say side, angle, angle? You could say that, um, and it does work, obviously, um, but we just call that angle, angle, side. So if you ever want to say side, angle, angle, I'd prefer you to go ahead and put it in the order that is more common um, and more widely used. So really quickly, I want to go through this because once we start getting the proofs, I think you guys uh, will benefit from having these kind of blasts from the past. Um, so it says angle C and angle F are right angles, which means angle C is congruent to angle F, and that is the definition of right angle. Now I will say, before I do any of the other ones, um, some of these, if you're a really smart mathy person and you really like geometry or you're another teacher or something watching this and you realize well, that's not actually the right, the technical right reasoning or the right theorem or postulate. I'm just giving the ones that I would use if I were you because that's the ones I think are easier. Um, so I'm sure there's some of them that are technically not the exact best answer, but I'm not necessarily looking for the exact best answer for all these. So we have these, it says APB. So APB is congruent to EPK. So those are congruent. How do we know that? Because of the vertical angle theorem. Vertical angle theorem, remember we call it vertical VAT a lot of times. This one, AD bisects BAC. So BAC, and this one bisects it, bisects that, sorry. Um, so that means it cuts it in half. If it cuts it in half, that means these two angles are equal, which means they're congruent. So BAD is congruent to DAC. And I know that because that is the definition of angle bisector. If you don't put this word angle, because there's also the segment bisector, if you don't put the word angle, I can live with that. If you just put the definition of a bisector, that's honestly probably what I would have done. So angle B is 25, or sorry, the measurement of angle B is 25. The measurement of angle A is 25. So measurement angle B is equal to the measurement of angle C. Um, I guess I would just say that's the definition of equality or just equal. Um, and then angle B is congruent to angle A. That's the definition of congruent. Because the definition of congruent, if they're congruent, that means they equal, they're equal to each other, their measurements are the same. So that's the definition of congruent. Uh, for this one, it's important to realize that these lines are obviously parallel. It says angle one is congruent to angle two. Um, so again, this might be a little bit easier if you think about extending these lines. So we have this line and this line that are parallel. That makes this one our transversal. So if you look at that, those are alternate interior angles. Um, when we did this, we did parallel lines, if and only if alternate interior angles are congruent. Honestly, if you still want to do that, that's awesome, but if you just put alternate interior angle or alternate interior angle theorem, those will all work. I'm okay with that. So we have 
XW is parallel to YZ. So these are parallel, they're marked. So again, if you want to look at these, extend those. So these are our parallel lines. And we have angle one, so this would be our transversal here. Angle one is congruent to angle two, that's corresponding. Corresponding angle theorem, or again, the way we did this, lines are parallel if and only if corresponding angles are congruent. Um, again, I'll accept either one. PR is good to PR. We've done this a bunch. So PR is the same in both triangles. We have this triangle and we have this triangle. And PR is the same in both. So PR is equal to PR is reflexive. W is the midpoint of QS. So QS is right here. If W is the midpoint, that means this section, W. Q has to be congruent to WS. That's what I put down here. That is the definition of midpoint. You could have also said that that, I guess if it was a line, you'd have to have a line. I was going to say bisecting, but bisecting is more with a line that goes through the midpoint. So this one says JK is equal to 15, PQ is equal to 15. Those are labeled. Um, so JK is equal to PQ. Again, that's going to be the definition of equality or equal. And again, I'm sure somebody's like, that's not the actual answer, but that's what I'm going to stick with it. Um, so that means they're congruent. That's the definition of congruence. Now, the difference between the last one is the last one we were talking about angles, I believe, and this one we're talking about segments. And so I'm sure that one of them is like the definition of congruent segments, the definition of congruent angles. I don't need any of that. Just the definition of congruence is fine with me. And the last one we do, we have CD bisects AB. CD bisects, so AB is right here. CD bisects it, which means it cuts it in half. So AD is congruent to DB. Um, that is the definition of segment bisector. Again, if you just say definition of bisector, I'm okay with that. And for what it's worth, just a fun fact, since it bisects it, that means it's got to go through this point, which is the midpoint. So that's what I almost said earlier when we did midpoint, and I almost said you could also call it a bisector, but you can't because the midpoint is a point. The bisector is a line or a segment. All right. So... Um, this is kind of getting into some things that are kind of building up to be a proof. Um, so what can we determine from the diagrams given? So first, mark your angles, or sorry, mark your givens on the picture. So AB is congruent to DE, so AB and DE are congruent. AC is congruent to DF. Since we already used one tick mark, now we have to use two. And angle A is congruent to angle D. So the first step, mark all your given stuff on there. Um, if you're writing a proof, you can list that as given, that's fine. Um, so we're done with that first one. Now number two says, can you write any other congruent statements that apply to your given? Um, so anything else that could be congruent in our pictures. So this is where we're looking for vertical angles, reflexive. So we're looking for any of the stuff that we did up here, all these 10, that kind of thing. And we can't, so I'm gonna just put no others. Can you write any congruent statements about looking by looking at the picture? Um, hold on, let me see. So can I run any other congruent statements by looking at your picture? I'm going to say no because we already have the congruent statements we need. So I'm going to say no for this one. I guess I'm kind of confused about two and three, but that's okay. And this one for verify, you have three congruent statements, label congruent sides with F congruent angles. Okay, so we said these, these, here. So we have, this is S, S, side and side, and then we have the angles and the angles, so we go ahead and mark that. Then are the triangles congruent? The answer is yes. If so, write the congruent statement and state Y. The congruent statement is triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle D, E, F. And the reason I know that is because of side, angle, side.
So let's try another one. Mark your givens on the picture. So AB is congruent to CD and AD, whoops, AD is congruent to BC or CB, sorry. So we got those, so we're done with that one. Can you write any other congruent statements applying to your givens? So I guess this is where I'm kind of confused at the difference between these because I would say BD is congruent to BD, but I don't know if I know that by looking at the picture or I guess that'd be looking at the picture and not anything that applies to the given. So I would say no for this one. And then this one I would say BD is congruent to BD. Those are segments and that's the reflexive property. So verify you have three congruent statements. So we have side, 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 side. So are the triangles congruent? So the answer is yes. We have triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB. And I know that because of side, side, side. So same thing with this one, AB is congruent to DC. AB, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, they are congruent, so I'll leave it. AB is parallel, so I want to make sure I mark AB is parallel to DC. So we're good with that one. So can you write any other congruent statements that apply to your given? So I guess this is maybe what they mean by that statement. Since AB is parallel to BC, I know that this angle and this angle are congruent. Um, so angle A is congruent to angle D. And I know that since they're parallel, those are alternate interior angles. Um, so the other thing we know is that this angle and this angle are congruent. So we have angle B is congruent to angle C for the same reason, alternate interior angle theorem. So can you write any congruent statements by looking at the picture? So now if you look at the picture, I know that this angle is congruent to this angle by vertical angle theorem. So angle AEB is congruent to angle DEC. Now again, the reason I used one letter for these and three for this one is because angle A, there's only one option for angle A, but angle E could be two different ones, and so I have to be specific. That's the vertical angle theorem. So if you look at the other ones now, we have these and those are congruent, and this one's congruent to this one, this one's congruent to this one. One, two, three, one, two, three. So verify I have three congruent statements. So we have an angle, a side, an angle, and another angle. So we actually have four with this one. So are the triangles congruent? If so, write the congruent statement. Well, first off, please realize that side, side, side works. The angle, angle, angle doesn't make sense. So you can't, we don't have anything with angle, angle, angle. Um, so you could use angle, side, angle. Um, or you could use, no, not, sorry, uh, angle, angle, side. Sorry, that's what it's called. So you could either say, so they are definitely congruent, and you can either use angle, angle, side, where the side is not in between your angles, or you can use angle, side, angle. It doesn't make any difference. Since we know all three angles are congruent, either one of those works. Um, and that means that triangle A, E, B is congruent to triangle B, E, C. So again, either one of those works because we know that information. We could use angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side, or angle, angle, side. Either one of those works. So what can we determine from the following diagram and the given? Um, this is kind of the same thing. We're just not doing it step by step. Um, so I know that A, E bisects B, D. So if it bisects it, that means... B and D are congruent. Sorry, BC is congruent to CD, and that's the definition of bisect. I guess technically it's segment bisector. And it says angle A is congruent to angle E, that's given. 
Um, the only other one we have is this angle has to be congruent to this one. So angle ACB is congruent to angle ECD. And I know that because of the vertical angle theorem, which means, uh, I guess, does it say? Yeah, I don't know if it actually wants us to go on and prove this, but I'm going to actually, I'm going to write the statement because it's good practice. Triangle ACB is congruent to triangle ECD. And I know that because we have angle, angle, side. The side is not between the angles, and so it's got to be angle, angle, side, not angle, side, angle. Um, so let's see, we have AB is congruent to ED, so that's great. C is the midpoint of BD, which means BC and CD are congruent. So it doesn't tell us that. So because of this, BC is congruent to CD. And I know that because the definition of midpoint. And it says AB is perpendicular to BD, so that's good. ED is perpendicular to BD. Um, so they tell us they're perpendicular, but they don't specifically state that angle B is congruent to angle D. Since they don't specifically state that, you want to state that. Um, and we know that because uh, you could put the definition of right angles. That's fine. I like to put all right angles are congruent. Either one works. So we have side, angle, side. Now, again, one of the things important when you're doing proofs like this is to go back and make sure you know. So do I actually know that this one's congruent to this one? Yeah, because they said it. Do I actually know that this angle is congruent to this one? Yeah, because it says right here, B is congruent to D. Do I know that uh, B, C, and C, D are congruent? Yeah, because it says it right here. So make sure it's actually stated, because if it just says C is the midpoint, yeah, you know that those have to be congruent, but until you write it, it's not official. So make sure you write that there. So we have triangle ABC congruent to triangle EDC, and that is because side angle side. Whoops, side angle side. QS bisects TQR. Oh, bisects the angle. Okay, so that means this one's congruent to this one. Again, and it doesn't say that, it says it bisects it, so we need to specify. Angle RQS is congruent to angle TQS, and I know that because that's the definition of bisect. SQ bisects TSR, so I know this one is congruent to this one. And again, it doesn't say that, so we need to specify that. So angle RSQ is congruent to angle T S Q. Again, the definition of bisect. And last but not least, I know that Q S is congruent to Q S. It's the same thing in both triangles. And so that's the reflective property. That's the one that a lot of you guys are going to miss because you're not going to remember to make sure you memorize that, I guess I should say. So now, again, we can just say, without listing all this stuff, I know that when you bisect, that means that these two angles are congruent, but you have to state it out. So now we have angle, side, angle, but I know that because we have angle, side, angle. They're all listed. You need all three of those congruence listed. Um, if it's not the given, you need to state it. Um, so before we had somewhere, this one was part of the given, so you didn't need to state it, but you need all three of those things specified. So I know triangle QRS is congruent to triangle QTS. And that is because of angle side angle. Um, so given VX is congruent to XY, so they put that on here. So again, that's one of our congruence. We don't have to state that again. Um, it says XW is congruent to YZ, so they have that, so that's good. So again, we don't have to state it again. And then it says that these are parallel. That's what that means. So since those are parallel, um, again, act like this is your transversal. And if you need to lengthen those lines just a little bit to help you out, 
So just looking at this here, that means this angle is congruent to this one because corresponding angle. But again, they don't specify that in your given, so you have to say that. So we have, let me, so I can read this better. Angle VXW is congruent to angle VXW is XYZ. And I know that because of corresponding angles, corresponding angle theorem. So if this one's congruent to this one, we have side, angle, side. But again, make sure you've proven all those sides and angles. So we have side, angle, side. So we know we have all those. Um, so that means triangle BXW is congruent to triangle XYZ. Oops, not equals. Because of side, angle, side. So the next one says, do the following proof. That's really the exact same thing we've been doing um, because I always have been telling you to end with telling you that those two triangles are congruent. So the only difference between this one and these is because it tells you what it wants you to prove. It wants you to prove the triangles are congruent. But this is literally no different than the other ones. Honestly, uh, number five and six were exactly like number one, two, three, and four with this part. I just changed them. I just said, made into a proof by telling you what you're going to prove. So that's literally the only difference. It's all the same. So don't get confused by this. So AB is congruent to AC. AD bisects BC. I mean, this one is congruent to this one. And so, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so now if we go over here, um, if you try, I guess I should say, so AD is also congruent to itself, it's reflexive. So now if we try to do, so it's obviously side, 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 but we only have one side listed. So you might say, oh, well, we have AD is congruent to AD, and that's the reflexive property. So now if you look again, we have one side, we have two sides, but we don't have the third side. We have the, it bisects, but we don't have it listed specifically. So you have to make sure you go through and say, oh yeah, that means DD is congruent to DC. And I know that because the definition of bisects. So now we have side, side, side. We have one side, two sides, three sides. So we're good to go. So triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ACD because of side, side, side. I like this way better because honestly, I think the hardest part is maybe making sure you write your triangles with the right congruent statement in the right order. But when they tell you to prove it, they had to write it in that order so you can kind of copy that. And the last one, same thing, we have AB is parallel. AB is parallel to ED. And we have AC is congruent to CE. So again, we want to prove those triangles are congruent. So if they're parallel, again, you can think of this as the transversal. So this and this angle are alternate interior. And this angle and this angle are also alternate interior, if you think about this one being the transversal. So it looks like we have angle, angle, side, because the side's not between the two angles. But again, you can't just put angle, angle, side, because so far the only thing we've written on our paper, the only thing we know for sure with those congruence is that side. So you have to put down, okay, so that means angle A is congruent to angle E. And I know that because of alternate interior angle theorem. Or again, the parallel lines, if and only if alternate interior angles are congruent. Either way is fine with me. And then I know that angle B it's congruent to angle D for the same reason. Forgot the end, but that's okay. So now if you want to use angle, angle, side, now we have our angle, an angle, and a side, and it says all that on our paper. We say they're all congruent. That's what you need. So now we can finish this out. Angle A, B, C, congruent to triangle E, B, C. It's because of angle, angle, side. So I know that was a long lesson because we did two of them in one. I tried to go as quickly as I could. And I honestly, I tried to cut things out of this, um, but everything in there I thought was really, really handy. Um, the 10 steps we did over here before all this, these 10, I was gonna cut those out. But again, it's really handy to go through and make sure you get kind of a review of a lot of that stuff we did back in like chapter one and chapter two. So if you have any questions, let me know. 
can email me or ask me in class.